thank everybody for joining me today. I'm glad to be here. Welcome. But let's talk about best practices. A lot of us in this session are learning and development professionals. And we come from an industry where sharing is the norm. We don't try to reinvent the wheel a lot of times. We use information uh, from other colleagues, other places, other projects, from the experts in the field. So why do, does it seem that we underestimate the value of sharing these best practices and the experiences that we've had? Let me pose a question to you. And I want you to think about this as we go through the session. Why don't we share best practices more often? Why are some of us reluctant to share best practices? I know from personal experience that industry leaders, they're always out there sharing. That is part of their leadership, is sharing what they know and passing on that knowledge to others. They know the value of sharing those learning resources. Again, our experience is unique. Even two people going through the same experience working on the same project will take away different things from that project. So we have a unique asset, each one of us. And it's something that we can lev uh, leverage to a professional advantage if we use it, we decide to use it. So I ask you again, why don't we all share best practices? And I ask you, why not you? And I hope by the end of the session you'll realize that if you're not sharing best practices in a more formal way, that you're missing out on a great opportunity. So let's talk about today's topics that we're going to cover. Just going to go over this shortly. What are best practices or BPs? Uh, why share? What's some of the reasons why you would want to share your best practices? Maybe there's some things that you haven't thought of that can urge you to do that. Uh, some places and ideas of how to share. And where, where are some places that you can share? And then I'm going to leave you with some next steps that hopefully you will take some action and get started right away. All right, so let's talk about best practices just in a very general way. And the term is a debatable one. Uh, every industry has its own key practices that they use. Uh, we do it in the learning and development industry. Uh, we have best awards and things like that uh, to recognize some of these best practices. Uh, but generally it means whatever industry, it, it's something that works, that brings superior results, a benchmark, a standard that has had some success, uh, using a particular method because it's been proven to work. And of course when something works, you would like to repeat it and reuse it over and over again if you can possibly do that. Uh, in fact, I did a little bit of a search just to see what kind of terms were out there for best practices. And if you Google best practices, you'll have about 10,000 web pages to, to start looking through. Uh, Google says it's a commercial or professional procedure that are accepted or prescribed as being correct or most effective. Now, sometimes we do learn what not to do from best practices as well. So I have a, a little bit of a... a I take a little bit of issue with that as being most correct or most effective. But we'll talk about that a little bit. So, why share? Why should I share what I know with, with people who don't know it? Why should I take all my hard work and experience and put it out there for people to judge, sometimes to criticize or give friendly feedback? But there are some good reasons, and the, the main ones I've pointed out here, because I have personal experience with this as a, a learning and development professional. Uh, the number one reason that I share, and I think is the number one reason to share, it builds your professional credibility. When people see your name out there, 
they think you're an expert. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second. But secondly, and this is important as well with the, a lot of folks leaving the workplace and a lot of knowledge going with them, is that sharing is a way for you to retain organizational knowledge. So let's take a closer look at those. First of all, building credibility. You are what people think you are. That is just a fact. Sometimes it's not nice. But uh, when people perceive you as an expert and you share best practices, it gives you an opportunity to build your professional credibility. Uh, it gives you that gravitas. Uh, you become known as an expert or an authority in your field. Uh, when people associate your name with information in the field, their perception, whether they're right or not, is that you're somewhat of an expert. The more that they see you out there and they see your name connected to things in the industry, the more your professional credibility is going to grow. If somebody Googles me, they put Karen Siska into the Google search, they're going to find a lot of stuff. They're going to find links to all my articles. They're going to find a link to uh, a book that I've written, uh, many, many different things. And they start to think, hey, that girl knows some things about learning and development. She might know some things about instructional design. Hey, she's written about it a few times. Why not take advantage of that same credibility building opportunity? as I have. If people see your name out there and your name is attached to some useful information that you're responsible for, that is instant credibility for you. So perceptions really do matter. They do count. This is the second point of, of why to share, to retain knowledge. Again, there's a lot of people who are retiring, leaving the workplace, even when somebody just moves from one job to another. I've experienced this where somebody has left, and yes, you've been, they've trained somebody else to do the job, but there's a lot of intrinsic knowledge that goes out the door with them. Uh, all kinds of different things that you've gathered from experience, from years of just doing the job. Uh, so I put it to you that by sharing best practices, it's giving you an opportunity to retain that knowledge and have more successful succession planning because, again, a lot of people are retiring or moving from different, different workplaces. Uh, it, it allows some continuity inside of your business, and a lot of us are in businesses where the clients, they get to know you. They want to work with those people that they know. And people just have a tendency, they like to work with people that they're familiar with. They're familiar with their work styles. Well, sharing best practices is an opportunity for continuity in this area because if you're working with clients, you're getting ready to leave, you're sharing with somebody, you're giving them that inside information that they might not have just by looking at a client file or reviewing some, some past materials and some, some past project information. So it really does give you an opportunity for continuity. And businesses like to do business with people that they know. Uh, the last point here is collaboration. Uh, sharing is, is a collaborative activity. Sharing encourages more sharing. And again, just the sharing, just getting out there and not even doing it in a formal way, but talking about what you know, it, it, that in itself teases out and captures embedded intrinsic knowledge. So when you begin to share, it, it's amazing. You know, you start retelling a story. Uh, you always remember more details or different details every time you talk about it. It's the same thing with best practices. It's amazing the things you'll begin to remember and maybe some of the caveats that you'll be able to share as well. So let's talk about how to share. And these are just some ideas to kind of get your creative juices flowing. Uh, the first is you can write about 
what you know. I know a lot of people groan. They're like, oh, my gosh, I'm not a writer. Writing is hard. Uh, you don't have to write a novel about something. You could put you can pick out one particular little nugget of information and write about that. Can you write a cohesive paragraph? If the answer is yes, then you should be able to write about your experience. Just break it down into smaller chunks. You can speak about it. How many of us belong to professional organizations uh, such as ATD, which is formerly ASTD. Uh, there are a lot of learning and development associations. There are a lot of business associations. There are sometimes volunteer opportunities with some of the organizations you may be involved with. Why not share what you know with some of those folks? Uh, Share some specific examples from a past project. You could do it face-to-face. -face. You can do it like we're doing today via a webinar. Uh, you can speak at a conference. Uh, there are always speaking en engagements available. If you're not comfortable with speaking, start small and move up from there. And the last thing I'm going to suggest on how to share is mentor about it. And what I mean by that is assist your colleagues, uh, assist your staff, help them understand the experiences that you've had by sharing and being open to sharing with them and learning from them as well. Again, you've had a unique experience. You've looked at things from your own point of view. And sharing those experiences really do help others to understand it. Now, it may not be a formal part of your job, but it's great for leadership development and, again, for building your credibility within the organization to be known as that go-to person. You know something about a certain project or a certain thing that needs to be done, and you're willing to share and talk about it. And the more you do these activities, the writing, the speaking, and the mentoring, the better you get at it, the more concise you get at it, the more comfortable you get at it, the better you are at filtering through all that information and really sharing the most, the most, in the most efficient way. So it's just something to, to consider. All right, so let's talk about some places to share uh, within your organization, within your field, and some suggestions of some vehicles that we're going to use for sharing. And again, I may have mentioned some of them, but a lot of these do bear repeating. So the first place I'm going to talk about is, is where to write. Um, my own personal experience is that I do this through GP strategies. I write some blog posts. I'm doing this webinar today. Uh, I've written for other professional blogs. There are opportunities out there within your field, or maybe you're interested in something else and you want to write about it. There are blogs out there. Do a Google search. Take a look and see. A lot of times, you may have to look for it now, but in the fine print, maybe down there way at the bottom of the page, <laughs> there will be information about how to submit, or you'll see author information. Once you get really good at writing, you may even want to submit some ideas and articles to some of the professional journals as well. Uh, there's a little more pressure there, but more pressure means more credibility building with that writing. And of course, social media, we're tweeting about this today, putting some ideas out here from the webinar. And uh, why not you? Why not get yourself known as an expert in the field by tweeting some, albeit short, but useful information out there that people will, will want to see. And once they get used to seeing it and they like what they see, they want more. So you'll have to keep it up. But, uh, you know, if you have something published, something, anything published, of course you're going to show up in the Google results. And, of course, we know that if it's on Google, that means that it's true. Um, but if you write something, if you publish something, it really does lend you instant credibility. And we were talking about one of the reasons why to share is you want to build your credibility. Oh, 
All right, where to speak? Again, just like I'm doing today, you can do a webinar. Anybody can, can, that has an internet connection and video on the computer can do a, a podcast. Uh, so you can talk about your experiences. You're not so good at writing them down, but you'd rather talk about them. Start your own YouTube channel. Um, professional associations, again, if you belong to an association or a volunteer organization, volunteer to speak. It may make you a little bit uncomfortable at first, but it really is a good experience and it helps you sharpen your thinking. Some places where to mentor, and I mentioned this already, is, is within your organization. Look around. Is there a colleague who's struggling, having a hard time, and you've had some experience that you could share with them to help them? Why wouldn't you want to do that? Uh, it's good for you, it's good for that person, it's good for the organization. Don't hold that knowledge so like your poker card real close to the chest. Let that out there and share it with some other folks. Um, but again, find a volunteer organization. Uh, get out there and share your information as a volunteer. Again, you meet a lot of people, you get to practice your skills, and you're building credibility as well. Now this time I'd just like to ask you to, to consider, now that I've talked to you about just some simple, quick and easy things to think about, some steps, what are you going to do with this information? I want you to think about it. Every time you publish a blog post, you write an article, you speak to a professional group, or even informally share ideas with colleagues, it's an opportunity to make it a useful exchange for, for you and for those who are receiving that information from you. So I'd like you to consider taking a few steps, and I'm going to give them here for you so that you can, you can take some action when we get done today. The first one is plan. Figure out where are the right places and the right sort of vehicles for you to share your knowledge. Do a Google search. Look at some professional uh, publications. Think about what do I want to talk about? What, what can I share? What be best practices can I share? Where would be the best place to do that? Then I want you to gather. Pull together some information you want to share in the appropriate format. So you found a blog that's interested in your information. So you're going to write a little bit differently than you would be writing for a professional journal. So just make sure that you're, you share it in an appropriate format, depending on your audience. But always, always, always be clear and concise. I know we have some industry jargon. Every industry does that. You want to appeal to a wider audience, then make sure that you keep the jargon to, the, to a minimum or you explain what it is. And then the last one here is implement. I just want you to get going. I want you to set some personal goals for sharing your best practices and get out there and start doing it. I'd just like to leave you with this one little short quote here. Uh, Chrissy Savek, in her blog post, Five Ways to Share Your Professional Expertise and Four Reasons You Should, says this. Your expertise is a powerful gift that deserves to be shared. It's yours, yes, you've earned it. But why keep all that wisdom to yourself? Why not send it out into the world to be free and lift others to new heights as well? Sharing your expertise means inviting a new and open conversation. And if you keep your eyes and ears and mind open, you may learn some things in the process as well. So sharing what exper whatever expertise is, whatever, whatever form it takes, it lends credibility and spreads the knowledge throughout your organization and throughout the field. Leveraging this information can become part of your career development strategy. So think about it. It can also be another organizational asset, a way to develop and manage intrinsic organizational knowledge. And one last thing I just want to leave you with, as a leader, if you share 
If you support sharing activities, you're building trust within your organization. So I thank you for your time today. I'm going to turn it back over to Kayla, who's going to share some resources and other info, and then we'll have some time for Q&A. Thanks, Karen. That was a great presentation. Um, as, as Karen mentioned, she's actually uh, one of our top contributors on our blog, which is at blog.tpstrategies.com. And she has been gracious enough to share a list of resources uh, for sharing best practices. So I encourage everyone to go check that out. Um, it will be linked in, in the presentation that will be emailed to you. Um, and also, as a reminder, if you do have a question for Karen at this time, be sure to enter it into the Q&A module. Um, as I just mentioned, the slides and the recording will be emailed to you within the next 24 hours. And um, let me see, it looks like there's maybe one or two questions coming in. Uh, Karen, can you see those? Uh, yes, I can. Let's see. We've actually had a couple of comments in the in the, the section, and I think this kind of speaks to why we try to hold information so close to the vest. Sometimes uh, somebody called that information hoarders <laughs> on there. Um, I'm so special, my stuff is unique, and that that really is true. You know, we start to think, well, I've worked really hard for this stuff. Why should I go out there and give it to other people? Again, you know, I mentioned about the organizational knowledge, which is really important with people leaving the workplace. Um, but also, you're not doing yourself any kind of service by holding that information inside. People are not going to know how great you are and how much you know unless you put that information out there. And then Karen, looks like there's one um, that came in. It says, I'm not much of a writer, but I'm interested in getting started. Any suggestions? That's probably something that's going through some of your, your minds out there. You're like, I got a lot of information in my head. I'm not much of a writer, but I want to get it out there. And my suggestion to you is just to start small. Um, I find the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. It's the same thing with writing. You're not trying to write a 400-page book. If you can put a coherent paragraph together, uh, some bullet points, that's a great place to start. Uh, it's, it doesn't take a lot, of, a lot of effort, and it's not so scary if you break it down into, into those small chunks. So that's my suggestion. Great. It looks like we have another one that just came in. Um, can you suggest ways to deal with management who don't share? Well, that's, I'm sure that's another question that's going through some people's minds. They're thinking, hey, um, I want to share, but we're kind of siloed here and people don't like to share. I think that you need to know, you need to open a conversation with management, somebody in, in leadership, because you really need to show them the value of sharing information. Even if you just take it from the angle we were talking before about that intrinsic, value, uh, intrinsic knowledge that's walking away from jobs. You may have job processes documented uh, very thoroughly. Somebody new may come in and train with somebody, but there's so much more knowledge to a job than what is actually documented that that's a great way to, sh to open up the sharing best practices conversation because we're talking about having ultimately higher retention rates and um, saving the company money at the end of the day. And actually, someone just sent me a, a, a note, um, not sure if everyone saw it or not, but they, they just said, uh, sharing is essential in a social enterprise for faster and better decision making. The companies that have a strong sharing culture will be the ones with little sharing inside the organization. Good point. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with that. I think that that, that closed, 
closed off and siloed information is kind of an old paradigm that that it still exists out there, but I think that more and more we're moving away from that. Um, someone just asked um, specifically for you, Karen, uh, do you use LinkedIn or Twitter for sharing your mentoring? Uh, yes, I do, actually. Uh, I use LinkedIn very heavily. I'm a very heavy networker on LinkedIn. I belong to many, many LinkedIn groups. That's a great way to dip your toe into the water as far as writing about what you know in your field. Because a lot of times in the, in the LinkedIn groups, if you look for areas that go along with your field and join those groups, people are in there asking questions. Uh, they're seeking advice a lot of times. And you may be able to mentor somebody in that fashion as well. So definitely LinkedIn. Uh, Twitter, not so much. I'm not so good at putting stuff into 140 characters. <laughs> um, I tend to have more to say than that. But I tell you, it, it takes a lot of discipline. And yes, some, some folks have used Twitter as a great vehicle to build their credibility. I, I remember from the early days of Twitter, and I was on there when there wasn't that many people, uh, they had something called Learn Chat on there. And it was a learning and development professionals group who would get together at a certain time every week. And they would use that hashtag, Learn Chat, and share ideas in that way. So you're, they're thinking outside the box. You're not just limited to that, to that 140 characters, but you're actually carrying on a